Hey guys, today I'm taking a look at the Ugreen NAS Sync, specifically the DXP2800. This is a powerful 2 bay NAS that's packed with features you don't usually see in other models. In this video, I'll walk you through everything you need to know, from what makes it stand out to how to set it up step by step. So let's dive right in. This is the box it comes in, and just so you know, I actually bought this for myself. Since I'm always creating videos, I'm constantly running out of storage. After doing some research, I decided to go with this one because it had everything I needed. So the first thing you'll see in the box is the NAS itself. Then there's the instruction manual, which is really easy to follow and covers everything you need to get started. You'll also find a two-year warranty card and a separate box with all the accessories. Inside, you've got the power cable, which comes in two parts and connects to the back of the unit. There's also a category seven ethernet cable, great quality and capable of handling faster and more stable connections. You get a small screwdriver and two keys used to lock the drive base, plus a set of screws in case you want to secure the drives to the trays for extra stability. So that's basically everything you'll find inside the kit. Now, when it comes to storage, this NAS supports two types of drives. You can install 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch SATA hard drives in the main base, and it also includes two M2 slots for SSDs. So in total, you can have up to four drives installed at the same time, two SATA drives in the trays and two NVMe SSDs inside. So the first thing I want to talk about is the design. It looks modern and clean, with a solid metal body and high quality plastic accents that give it a premium feel. On the front, you'll find the power button, a USB-C port and a USB 3.2 port. Both of these ports are there in case you want to connect external drives or transfer files directly without having to go through your network. On the upper part, you'll find the two drive trays. The mechanism is really straightforward. You just press the button and the tray pops open. From there, you can slide it out and install your hard drive. If you want to lock it in place, you can use the small key included in the kit. Once it's locked, pressing the button won't release the tray. Just to be clear though, this isn't an anti-theft feature. It's simply meant to keep the drive secure and avoid accidental removal during everyday use. On the back, you'll find a magnetic dust filter covering the cooling fan. There's also an HDMI port, which is great if you want to connect the NAS directly to a monitor for media playback or system access, especially since this NAS has a built-in GPU. You'll also find another USB 3.2 port, two USB 2.0 ports, and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN port which is noticeably faster than the standard gigabit ports found on most other NAS devices. Finally, there's a reset button and the power input we looked at earlier. Now, when we talk about internal components, this is where things get interesting. The Ugreen NAS is powered by an Intel N100 quad-core processor, which is more than capable of handling everyday NAS tasks, like file sharing, media streaming, backups, and even running multiple apps at once without breaking a sweat. It comes with 8GB of DDR5 RAM right out of the box, and the best part is, it's expandable up to 16GB. It also includes integrated Intel UHD graphics, which means this NAS isn't just for storage. You can actually use it for things like 4K video playback through the HDMI port, light media editing, or even running containerized apps with a graphical interface. Personally, I won't be using that feature, but it definitely adds another layer of flexibility, especially for content creators or anyone working with visual tasks directly from the NAS. Now, the operating system this NAS uses is called Yugos Pro, and it really ties everything together. It's Ugreen's custom operating system, built on a Linux foundation, and it comes pre-installed on its own 32GB eMMC storage, so it doesn't take up space on your drives. What I really like about Yugos Pro is how fluid and intuitive it feels. The interface is clean, modern, and super easy to navigate, even if you're new to NAS devices. Everything from setting up users, managing storage, installing apps, or accessing your files remotely feels smooth and responsive. Now, when it comes to capacity, this NAS supports up to 22 terabytes per drive bay. So, with both trays, you can have a total of 44 terabytes using 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch SATA drives. On top of that, each M2 SSD slot supports up to 2 terabytes, giving you an extra 4 terabytes if you use both. That means you can get up to 48 terabytes of combined storage, 
which is more than enough for most creators. In my case, I'm starting with just one drive, a 20TB Seagate Ironwolf Pro. Later on, I plan to add a second one just like it, so I can set them up in a mirrored configuration. That way, if one drive ever fails, all my data stays safe. Putting the disc into the tray is really simple. Just press the latch and the tray cover pops open to the side. Then you place the drive inside and once you close the cover, the disc is secured in place. I'm going to leave it like this for now, but if you want it to be extra secure, you can also use the included screws. The last step is just sliding the tray back into the NAS until it clicks. Now we're ready to set it up. The first thing I'm going to do is install the Ugreen NAS app on my phone. You can skip this step and do everything from a PC later, but I want to show you the easiest way first. Now plug the NAS into power and connect it to the internet. In my case, I set it up right next to my router and use the ethernet cable that came in the box. Once everything's connected, just press the power button to turn it on. Back on the app, tap on new device registration. If your phone is connected to the same network, the NAS will show up right away. Then tap on register and you'll be prompted to create a username and password. Make sure to write this down because this is how you'll log into your NAS going forward. Once that's done, the system will begin initializing and just like that, you'll have access to your NAS. The first thing it'll ask you to do is create a storage pool. In my case, I selected the 20TB drive I installed earlier. If you have more than one drive, this is the step where you can choose a RAID type and it's basically a way to manage multiple drives together. For example, RAID 0 combines both drives to give you maximum speed and capacity, but there's no protection. If one drive fails, you lose everything. RAID 1, on the other hand, mirrors your data across both drives, so if one fails, the other still has a full copy. There are other RAID types too, but these two are the most common for setups like this. Since I only have one disk installed right now, I just went with the basic configuration. It's the simplest setup and works perfectly until I add a second drive later on. Next, it'll ask you how much storage you want to allocate. This is an advanced feature in case you want to divide your drive into separate volumes. I just went with the maximum available space. Then you'll need to choose a file system, either ext4 or butterfs. I personally chose ext4 for simplicity. Now here's something really important. When you press done, the system will format the entire drive. So if you're using a hard drive that already has data on it, make sure to back it up first because everything will be erased. Now the NAS is fully set up and ready to use. You can actually do everything from your Windows PC or MacBook as well, which gives you even more flexibility. On Ugreen's website, you can download the app for your operating system. They even have versions for Apple TV and Android TV, which is great if you want to access your media directly from your TV. You can also access everything directly through your web browser, but I'm going to install the Windows version because it offers a smoother experience and overall just makes it easier to move large files back and forth. So once you install the app, all you have to do is enter the login information you created earlier and log in. The first thing I recommend doing right away is heading to the control panel, then going to update and restore to check if there's a new update available. In my case, there was one, so I went ahead and installed it. The update process is pretty quick. It took me around five to 10 minutes. And once everything is up to date, I recommend going straight to the control panel. First, tap on user management, then go to device connection. And here I suggest changing the name of your NAS to something easier to remember. In my case, I'm keeping it simple and naming it Furnace. Now, still in the control panel, head over to file service. Here you'll see different protocols you can enable to access your files from other devices. I'm going to enable SMB, which stands for server message block. It's one of the most widely supported file sharing protocols and works perfectly with Windows and many other systems. Just toggle enable SMB service, hit apply, and the changes will be saved. The next step is to go to the files section. Here, we're going to create a new shared folder. This will be the folder you'll access from your PC to upload and manage all your files. Just click to create a new folder, give it a name and press create. If you're setting this up for other users, you can adjust the permissions here. But since I'm the administrator of this NAS, I automatically get full access. Hit OK again and your shared folder is ready to go. 
Now let's set it up on Windows. Press the Windows key and the letter E to open this PC. Then right click on this PC and choose Map Network Drive. It'll ask you to pick a drive letter. Z works just fine for this example. In the folder field, type the path like this, double backslash, then the name of your NAS. In this case, it's Fernas. Then another backslash followed by the name of the shared folder you just created. After that, it will prompt you to enter your login information. Just use the same username and password you set when registering the NAS. And that's it. You now have full access to your NAS storage directly from your computer. Now, that's the basic way to use this NAS, but honestly, it's packed with features that go way beyond just storage. If you really want to get the most out of it, there's an app center with a bunch of useful tools you can install. For example, you can turn this NAS into a virtual machine host, set up a private cloud, run a media server like Plex, manage your photos with AI-powered face recognition, or even use it for backup automation and file syncing across multiple devices. It's super versatile and can easily become the central hub for your digital life or even your small business. If this model feels a bit small for your needs, Ugreen also offers larger options with even more expandability, going all the way up to 8 trays with support for up to 208 terabytes of storage. That's more than enough to handle massive amounts of data. But if you're someone like me who needs a reliable, high-performance solution for storing all my videos, managing large files, and accessing them quickly from anywhere, this 2 by NAS is more than enough. So that's going to be all for today. I'll leave links in the description for this NAS and all the different versions in case you want to check them out. If you decide to buy using my link, it helps support the channel at no extra cost to you and I really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help. Thanks so much for watching.